I'm back, baby. Oh, well, hello there, friends. Didn't see you there. Thanks for joining me today. I got a fun one lined up, I promise. So I have another 10 gallon tank here and you may notice it has no rims. Oh, no. Well, when I was cleaning this tank, the rims popped off. It still seems to be structurally sound. So now I guess I have a rimless tank. Let's just roll with it and not ask too many questions. Let's just get on with the scape. Don't want it to take too long. Today, I'm going to try to start my first Sulawesi tank. I will note along the way, some of the special stuff you need to do to prepare for Sulawesi shrimp, as well as telling you how I'm going to deal with those challenges so anyway if you want to follow along at home you're going to need some type of inert substrate i have chosen black sand blasting sand like my previous few scapes but pool filter sand or even some type of gravel can work as well make sure to give this stuff a good rinse it is pretty messy moving on to the hardscape today i'm going to play around with some of the lava rock this is an amazing choice of hardscape because it is so porous it actually allows more surface area for bacteria to grow and can help keep your tank cycled it also looks really cool and for plants, I have my usual moss, so Zwasser Tang and Salvinia, the staple of any Bob Moss tank build. I also have some Crips that I pulled out of other tanks. I realize I have a lot of Crips, but no Crip-centric tanks, really, and the usual Java Fern over here. I have so much of this, it's just crazy. And as always, I have crushed coral off-screen. Getting into the scape now, we start as always with putting down our substrate. Because I'm using Crips, I'll need to use root tabs, so I need to do some spots thicker than others, but you will see how I address that problem in a moment. While I lay down the substrate, let's go over Sulawesi shrimp and their needs. They are a hard water, high temperature shrimp. They live in 7.5 to 8.5 pH water and require a TDS around 220 or so. They also require a temperature in the range of 24 to 28 degrees Celsius. That's something like 78 to 84 Fahrenheit for you Americans. So that means finding a good heater. Usually people get the Sulawesi shrimp buffer for their RO water to bring the pH and TDS up, but I am currently between RO units, so my tap water will have to do for now at least. Luckily, Sulawesi and Neocaridina have very similar parameters, although the Sulawesi are on the higher end of acceptable Neo conditions. For this reason, it's actually common practice to like mature the tank with some Neos and snails before you get your Sulawesi, so that is what I will be doing. I also don't have the heater yet, so any suggestions, let me know in the comments, please and thank you. Finally, I will be monitoring the parameters in here to ensure the pH and TDS are high enough for the expensive ass shrimp I'm looking to buy. All right, we got the substrate and I'm going to start this one with the sponge to ensure proper spacing. I have a vision for this scape, so let's watch it take place, shall we? Laying down the lava rock, I try to adhere to the rule of thirds I mentioned in my last setup video by having the focal point, this very large stone with the big hole, and you will see how I set up the bottom third here to try to draw the eye in that direction, as explained in the previous video. I found these amazing pieces of lava rock at a local fish store, and I decided to change it up as all my scapes seem to use dragonstone, and I don't want to get too boring, do I? This chunk in the bottom left already has a piece of java fern glued to the back of it for a split lash of green and I also have some much smaller pieces of lava rock with java fern attached to play around with. Because I am using Crypt 20 Brown later in the scape, it's good to add some bright plants in the foreground to help keep the scape from looking too dark. Java fern is a rhizome feeder so you don't want to put it into the dirt like I'm going to do with the crypts so we just attach it to hardscape with glue or fishing line and allow it to grow from there. Speaking of crypts, I need to add root tabs now that I have the hardscape in so let's add a little more substrate where I plan to put my plants. The the Crypt Pygmia I have is a foreground crypt that stays very short, but the Wenty Brown gets very tall, so I'll be putting it in behind this stone and in some other places. You need to ensure you have something like three to five centimeters, that's like two to three inches of substrate where you want to put the root tabs to avoid dangerous leaching. I've said it before, but I have a really old video on this topic. Check that out if you're interested in what root tabs can do to your water. I think I have enough dirt in now, but it's a little messy, so let's use my method from last video of cleaning it up with the turkey baster. It does look like enough to me, so time to add the tabs. I have a lot of crypts, so I'm just going to empty this bag out and use everything I have. Probably shouldn't have done that because of all the little bits, but what's done is done. I'm going to place the tabs roughly where I want to put my crypts, about three to five centimeters apart from each other to ensure good coverage as per the instructions. And then I just push them down with the gravel brush like I've shown you before. Amazing technique round of applause for bob moss thank you thank you oh, you shouldn't have thank you thank you, you really so shouldn't much. have thank you 
Okay, moving on with the scape. You can see why I shouldn't have just dumped the bag out here. I struggled to get all these little bits deep enough, but have no fear. My brain is here. I have a solution for this. I just have to get all these little tabs in the back down. Oh, wow. The magic of television. So to cover up my mistake, I add a teeny tiny bit more substrate on top of the spots I'm worried about and just clean it up. Make it look nice and presentable. Something you'd really want to take home to your mother, you know? Finally, the substrate is prepared. Time to add the crypts. Like I said, I'm going to have crypt pygmia in the foreground because I know how short it stays. I don't know why I originally thought it got taller when I first got it, but this is about as big as I've gotten it. You can see the roots are nice and long, so it should survive any potential melt it may suffer from transferring tanks. Make sure you get those roots in the dirt so the plant can establish itself and start spreading. And now the true beauty of this tank, time for the Crypt Wenty Brown. This is stuff I pulled out of my sanctuary tank mainly. This was the one with the green shrimp from Shrimp Life. They were limited in how tall they could get due to the depth of that tank, but in here they will be able to reach for the sky and really fill out the back. I have a handful to put behind and I know you can't really see it so ooh, magic again what? i also want a pocket of tall crypts right here that along with the hardscape adds some nice depth to the tank and it will make it look amazing in like six to eight months once these plants all establish and spread a little bit the crypts in front and behind the large lava rock will drape over it and if it looks like i think it will everyone will be so jealous okay so a couple more in the back a couple more in the front and the crypts are done so my idea for the subwasser tang and moss is to ball it up like this and stick it in these beautiful natural holes in the stone. After the previously mentioned six to eight month period, they will have grown in, attached themselves to the stone and spread around the openings. If I'm thinking correctly, this will give an amazing place for babies to hide and feed completely uninterrupted by larger shrimp. I'm going to finish the scape with this little rock path as some of the lava rock broke off in the bucket I was soaking it in and well, waste not, want not, right? Plus it looks amazing not to toot my own horn here or anything <laughs> and finally I add in some crushed coral I did fill this scoop and I dropped it in behind so you will hopefully never see it but as you can see I did not use it all I'll have to check the parameters and see if it needs more or not all right so uh, escape done I did move it up onto the shelf and now time to fill it with some water I'm just using dechlorinated tap water here for my cycle I may have to pick up some of the Sulawesi minerals if the pH does not get high enough enough and as mentioned at the start i did not add my heater yet leave those suggestions in the comments please to finish things up here i have to hook up the sponge filter as usual this happens to be a sponge filter out of one of my other 10 gallons so this will greatly speed up the cycling process so the way you don't require anything special when it comes to this stage of the setup so i'm going to follow the steps i laid out in my instant cycle video by adding some nettle pellets as an ammonia source i'm also going to overdose back to ae at this point as well normally you would only add Add a rice grain size portion to not risk any parameter changes but we want to kickstart the biofilm growth so i'm going to add a full scoop to this cup add in some tank water to get it all mixed in and when we add it into the tank we get this fun cloud of magic powder that will have biofilm growing in a couple of days another thing i've been doing lately is adding a few milliliters of stability to add in some good bacteria and lastly my trusted ram's horn snails the cycling machines toss in the salvinia and we are good to go something else i do that i noted in my instant cycle video i'm going to overdose liquid fertilizers after day three of cycling you have to let the dechlorinator run its course as they also bind heavy metals making your fertilizer worthless and that usually takes about 48 hours or so this surplus of fertilizers and leaving the tank light on 24 7 for a full week to start will allow me to add shrimp into this tank very very quickly now starting my cycle this way the nitrates will be through the roof after the first week so i'll need to do an extremely large water change before adding any shrimp into this tank this is perfectly fine as it only has snails and plants once i do have shrimp in there i'll need to be more careful with fertilizer and altering the parameters but ultimately i do want to get silhouette in this tank one week later I need to monitor the pH, the TDS, and the temperature, and if any of those are off, I need to adjust them slowly. That is the key. I will need to adjust the parameters slowly so as not to affect the neocaridina shrimp I have in here to help mature the tank. Neos can live in crazy parameters, but you have to acclimate them over weeks and possibly months to those changes. Now, you will see it's been some time since I set this up. It's actually been featured in some of my videos already, and I've moved some of my call shrimp in here because I think some of them look funny. The major holdup for me 
and getting the Silhouette is one. The weather in this part of Canada, it's only just getting warm enough to safely ship this type of shrimp. I'm very concerned about that, so I may actually wait until June to order regardless. And B, I can't find them. If you know any Canadian shrimp breeders with Silhouette, please send them my way. I would prefer not to get imports, but if push comes to shove, I'll do what I guess. Once I get these buttes, you guys will be the first to know. Keep an eye out on my community tab for updates on that. Uh, make sure to subscribe to stay updated. Uh, until then, I just have to enjoy this weird key lime pie shrimp and her ugly ass siblings. Thank you so much for watching and making it all the way to the end. Make sure to like the video if you liked it. Your reward for making it this far is an internet high five. Get ready to smack your monitor in three, two, one high five big thanks to brian dotson michael redman leather turtle jamie anderson mitch bottom a tater salad poseidon's pets arrival and robert redman i have a bunch of cool links in the description it would be very meritorious if you check those out my phenomenal devoted fans of course i have my new web store at bobmoss.shop i have the twitch stream links loopity bloppity give me your money d and remember until next time keep your shrimp hand strong Bye bye now